Hey. What's up? Hey, I'm in. Yay. How's it going? Good morning. Good. Yes, this is my morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long ago did you wake up? Sorry, did we wake you up to do this interview at 2 o'clock? No, uh, Monkey King woke me up to go over there. I'm actually at the illustrious Monkey King Studios. Oh, I see. So, um, I just saw a text. I don't know if that was oops, addressed to me or not, but oh well. Um, but you know, I'm trying to find a room that's less echoey. Let's see. How's this? Oh, no, this is bad. The other one was all right. It's, it's kind of fun to watch you walk around, though. Yeah, oh, here I go. I'm, I'm here at the uh, at Monk, at Monkey King. Nice. But uh, yay us! Yay us! Yay us! So congratulations, your your figure sold out. I think, I think it's the fastest DKE sellout ever. Um, oh, wow! Yay! Thank you guys. Thanks I think, to everyone. Who, I think so. Yeah. Yay! Uh, that, I think the the previous record was like ten or fifteen minutes, and this was literally in minutes, minutes, like where wow. people were like, "Where did it go?" Oh no way! Like I, I, uh, I opened up my phone at twelve oh six, and I went to your. I was like, "Oh yeah, the, the the figure's going on sale. I should go check it out." And I opened up uh, your website, and like for some reason, it was just saying one left. And then right. I That's took a screenshot and posted it on my Instagram stories. And then I was getting messages saying it's already gone. And I'm like, yeah, Shopify is weird. So if we have one on an invoice already that's unpaid, mm. it shows that one is in stock, but it won't let you buy it. Oh, it's, okay. Shopify is like really weird. I can't, I don't know. It's one of mm. those things. But for those of you out there in TV land, this is the figure. So what I think is interesting about this figure is when we were first talking about like, how do we interpret your work into three and three quarter? I was like, you know, do you want to do a Star Wars figure? Do you want to do pop culture? And you thought about it and you decided, well, why don't you talk about that process? Because you really- Right. So carded figures are an interesting collectible, right? um you uh you know ideally like you know you like you know if when you're young you take them out and you play with them and they get damaged and you know that's you know great because you had an experience with that figure but when you get older the 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 you know the the carded figure is something you want intact and it's kind of sad because this figure that was designed to be played with, designed to be interacted with, is entombed in the uh, blister and the card. Dare I say, imprisoned in, <laughs> <laughs> um, in said blister and card. And um, imprisoned. imprisoned. And I was thinking about, um, you know, what that meant. And I guess I was trying to, like, maybe in one hand, uh, in one way, in one hand, I was considering it from the perspective of the, 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 the toy or the figure or the sculpt. And the other hand, I was kind of like looking at it from my own experiences, um, say dealing with the law and back when like my life was in shambles and um i kind of realized that that experience can be broken down into three very unique acts the first act is the recognition or realization of your situation the second would be the struggle to free yourself of the situation which is impossible. And the third will be the resignation 
where you just kind of come to terms with the situation and accept the fact that this is just the way it's going to be. And um, that's the pretty first fucking day, dark. <laughs> that's that's what I'm known for, Dove. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> it, my, I, 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 you know, that combination of cute, you know, empathetical character, you know, something that you could look at and like, you know, empathize with in combination with a dark, heavy kind of human nihilistic, you know, narrative, it's just my forte. It's just something that I, I love. And I like where, to think- Where does know, that come from? Um, self-loathing, uh, <laughs> uh, self-esteem issues, um, you know, uh, I, 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 always, I always feel that like at the heart of everything that I do is this idea of innocence lost. Uh, the reason why the bear is white is because the white suggests purity or innocence. And like the, you know, and it's something that is easily tainted. And the, and so, um, the, yeah, the, I, I believe, I truly believe the idea of innocence lost is something that all human beings can relate to. Is there um, a specific time in your life where you, probably, where, where, that, where that happened to you? I think it was the, the transition from like being at home, you know, and raised by my parents and then going to school in Fresno, California um, was probably the first kind of like, oh, this is, you know, this, this sucks. <laughs> kind, of, kind of. Did you, did you, or, did you already know that you wanted to be an artist at that point? I, I was pretty good. At, I was pretty adept at drawing um, and um, like I drew a lot of stuff, a lot of Star Wars related artwork. Like if you ever look at, if you ever, if you own a, a David Cho book, um, and you, he, he, David Cho's like famous, for, uh, is, what was not famous for, but he has, he's post, he's published like old artwork from when he was a kid. And it was a lot of like kind of Star Warsy, Mark Toddish looking, um, illustrations. Mm -hmm. And um, I did. I, I, I look at his. I, I saw his, and I was. And all I thought to myself was, "That looks remarkably like what I do," mm -hmm. uh, or I did when I was a kid. And so, um, so I mean, was, like, I, yeah. Was this loss of innocence just you leaving home and realizing that there's a whole like life and world ahead of you where you have to make your way, or did did being an artist affect that like was it i have to go out there now and be an artist and no, try and support no, no, myself no, no, no. no I, it was I, just life in general yeah life in general but so then is, but is this figure a metaphor for your life or is this supposed to be a metaphor for everybody i think people can take whatever they want from it i i, I truly believe that there are no wrong answers when am you know relating to some kind of artwork. It's about, you know, um, me pouring my own, you know, personal experiences by employing um, idioms or metaphors um, into the work. And then people taking those um, clues and relating to them in their own way, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. who cares about like, you know, what it means to me, it's about what it means to you. That's interesting. I mean, not every artist, you know, feels that way. Some people- Yeah, well, I mean, if, if, if that was something I cared about, then I would try and like paint hyper-realistically. And I don't know, I'm, there's, there's plenty of other people doing that. <laughs> and it's- that, it's that's, that's what you would do for yourself? 
if I was so concerned about like sending a very specific message, I would mm-hmm. probably spend even more time detailing in you know the work, you know, and I probably would be employing less metaphor and include and 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 just being more almost like photographic uh, right. with what I do. And I'm not, I, I have no interest in those things. I, I have, I'm, I, I'm, I'm more interested in the art of expression and letting people gather what they want from it rather than like trying to dictate to people what they should see and think and prioritize in my work. What do your parents think of your work? Um, my mom is afraid that people think that she was a terrible mom. <laughs> <laughs> I could just, I just, I've never met your mom, but I could just imagine the conversation. Is like, why do you always paint such sad stuff? Right, right. Has she ever, has she ever said that to you? Um, yeah, yeah, she said <laughs> that, and um, and. She also, um, but she at the same time, she also kind of realizes that like, there's just a lot of sadness in the world. Mm-hmm. And um, like, I, I, I guess maybe to a certain degree, I am very sensitive to those things. Mm-hmm. So. Um, are, 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 they, are they proud of you? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Like they'll, they'll never say it to my face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but um i like you know like maybe walked into a room uh, to the room and where when i like kind of caught like little bits and pieces of you know my um uh, my mom you know or back when my dad was around um talking about what i do to like their family fr- to their friends and stuff Right. And, it's always uh, inter- interesting when they tell other people. It's like when they tell you, you always kind of get like a complaint. Why are you doing this? And, this and, da, da, da. and then to someone else, they're like, oh, well, my son's doing this. And, da, da, da. and it's like, yeah, it's exactly. like, it's like, who's that? I, I, I hope that you give Samuel the same treatment. It, it grows, you know, it, 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 it's, it's that tough love. Tough love is, <laughs> is it's important. Um, I don't know. I, I think you have to be able to, I don't know if that's stuff that you can purposefully do. I think that has to sort of be in your nature. Right. right. Um, and you sort of have to be raised that way, but to consciously withhold praise. Um, I was watching this documentary about Anthony Bourdain, not this new one, but the one that uh, was on, I think, CNN. And, you know, they talked about, they caught one glimpse of him making some comment about, offhanded about how someone did something well, and then he sort of caught himself. And, Mm -hmm. you know, his, his, you know, the way he operated was, and there was a, I wish I could, you know, be so eloquent and tell you exactly what he said, but it was kind of the thing like, you know, you don't compliment people, like they just sort of have to know. And I, I don't know, that's sort of a- Compliment a, someone for doing their job. That's what they're doing. That's what they're there to do just a, <laughs> kind of thing, right? It's a, it's a weird attitude. I mean, in parenting, they're definitely, you know, you know, I found myself, telling Samuel all the time or his sister, like when you're done eating, put the plate, you know, clear your plate, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I found myself telling him, thank you for doing it one day. And then a lot of parenting books would tell you like, don't say thank you. Like you're supposed to do that. You don't need to be thanked to do that. It's right. like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Weird. You know, so like, I, you know, I am a big fan of, um, like these like disturbing cultures in you know modern human existence um and like um i i follow a lot of reddit subreddits like the nice guys uh mm-hmm. subreddit or the incel tier subreddit and stuff and why, why does this appeal to you because maybe to a certain degree i can empathize with it 
Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, and maybe it's because it, it reminds me of aspects of my personality from like when I was still trying to figure out like social systems mm-hmm. in um, the, the world around me. And I kind of deduced that the reason why the incel problem is the problem that it is, is my, my theory is that it is the participation trophy um, thing that mm-hmm. was a thing. You, you, you remember that, that like we're, we were both old enough to kind of remember when seeing like there was this thing going on in mm-hmm. child rearing, like in the nineties. Right. You know, you know, and, um, where it's like everyone gets a trophy, everyone's great. You, you know, everyone gets a pat on the back. You know, mm-hmm. everyone gets coddled. Right. And um, and so you uh, people grow up like with this like idea that like you know I should be rewarded for just existing. Well, I mean, it's always a balance, isn't it? Like you, and it depends what your goal is it's like um samuel tried out for you know like the all-star traveling baseball team and he didn't make it mm-hmm. and i said well if you want it <laughs> uh what's going on liz here? is here sorry uh, <laughs> uh you know i told him if you I want it like this forever so you, sorry. You, have, you have to practice yeah and then yeah. i said you have all the stuff if you practice you can do it mm-hmm. and you know, just didn't get, uh, just kind of letting that be, you know, using it all as like a teachable moment. So when he tries out and doesn't make it, if he really wants it, and I've told him like, what do you like doing? He likes playing Minecraft. I said, if you want to play baseball at that level of these other kids, you have to like playing baseball as much as you like playing video games. Right. right. And if not, that means you have to do it every day. Yeah. You can't yeah. be like, hey, hey, do you want to play catch? And then it's like, no, not today. It's like, Dude, you have to like sleep with that glove like under your pillow, kind of like you right, know, ob- right. obsession. It, it has to be a passion. It has to be something right. that you are like you're inspired by and motivated by, and like it, it is it's something that you you just right like inherently want. And so, and because like the worst thing is is that if you push your kid, force your kid into a situation like that right right that's sort of like tiger mom situation yeah i mean my parents pushed me when i was a kid they wanted me to play piano mm-hmm. right i said like yeah. you'll be the, they told me it'll be the life of the party <laughs> um, and they wanted me to play golf and tennis because mm. all the business deals were done over golf know, yeah you know over golf and you know that that was true you know then but um not necessarily true not necessarily true today but you know they wanted me to play like you know the social sports you know you can go out and like i don't know i never took to to any of it and couldn't you know get away to you know couldn't run fast enough um Mm -hmm. but they tried and then you know once i found what i was passionate about i just spent all my time doing that and then I got the opposite comment. It was like, maybe you should, uh, you know, sort of spread out a little bit and pay attention to some of these other things. It's like, mm, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah, like you know, it's. I mean, it, on, on one hand, it's good advice in the sense that, like, it's good to diversify and to um, familiarize yourself with. I don't, you know, it's funny because like, I, I remember like kind of clearly the moment when like my brain just clicked on into this idea of diversifying like mm-hmm. my interest. And it wasn't, it literally was in my twenties, I think, when mm-hmm. I suddenly kind of realized like how interesting information is. Right. And I like, actively went out and like consumed as much of it as I possibly could. It also kind of coincided with the the advent of the internet. Right. You know, so but um I think was, for all for all artists because for the majority of artists that I know, 
Mm -hmm. they are all technically small business owners. Yes. Um, and there are very, some people do get, you know, gigs working for other companies mm -hmm. and um, um, but for the most part, anytime I've like lectured to college students, it's, it's basically, it is sort of that tough love. Like, don't expect that you're going to go out and get a job and you're going to mm -hmm. be able to show up to work or, you know, you're going to be able to just, you know, paint on a mountain and someone else is going to take care of everything else. Like, right. You're going to be, you're going to be in charge of, you know, your sales and your promotion. And I mean, until you get to a certain level where there's enough money that other people can make money helping you. Um, that it's that you have to know the basics of accounting and how your taxes work and mm -hmm. um, just all of these these things that you know I think that people didn't have to know years ago I think decades ago people expected they could come out of school and get a job and have a pension and you know buy a house and retire and that shit's over yeah, well, it's mostly over. It's mostly over. I mean, it's over for most people, I think. You'll be um, lucky if you can be able to, like, land one, because they still exist, I think. They still exist in certain sectors, um, but it's, uh, at least in this country, if other people are in other countries, it's, it's a little bit different, and the culture is a little different about taking care of, you know, people who work for them, but Right, right. Um, for artists in particular, um, I think most artists I know, if they're making a living at making art, can expect to be making art until the day they die because, you know, there's just not going to be, you know, a retirement plan. Like it. Um, yeah. I was, <laughs> and what's interesting is there's a lot of artists that I've been buying art from that get paid, let's say, comic artists who get paid to publish something. And they get paid as a royalty and then they have the original art to sell mm -hmm. and that used to be sort of a retirement plan for some artists is they would have like these years worth of art and they got older and they could you know their popularity grew and they could start selling this art but a lot of these artists now are doing everything digitally right. and they're getting paid for the job and they have nothing else after that to be able to sell right. um and it's uh well anyone who has watched this uh now there's NFTs. Yeah, now there's NFTs. Yes, we can all retire on those. All right. Um, so, so back to this this realization that life is a prison. Um, right. Or that he is in prison. That he is in prison. Yes. I mean, you know, life is. I guess we're all technically in a cage, right? It just depends how. <laughs> It just depends how big the cage is. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, for, like, for, you know, I, I am bound to this cursed planet by gravity, right? So, right. you know, I, I guess it depends on how, like, you know, um, I, I am bound to this, you know, I, I, I have, I am imprisoned myself, my, I like willingly into this art career because I feel like I've got nothing else mm -hmm. you know and so I put all my chips into you know the art thing so and so I guess, I guess to a certain degree that is an, a, a, a self-imposed pr imprisonment too um, you know we all like you know realize that there are limitations and there's boundaries and um, to, to the lives that we lead and um, you know, but that figure is bound to the card and blister, <laughs> and um, and he, he's just realizing. <laughs> um, I I think um, the the way I phrased it on Instagram was um, realize the name of the figure um, is my attempt at illustrating the moment you realize you're con you're totally fucked. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and 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 um i i, I think i i think um a big shout out to dave bondy for um you know sculpting the figure um uh he helped capture that moment 
uh, beautifully. And um, I'm really happy and that the response has been positive to the figure. And um, I am looking forward to several more evenings of me kicking back at BKE Studios, painting additional parts of the series. Can we talk about how long it took you just to paint two eyes and a fucking nose? And how many tacos I had to feed you over how many days? It was a process. <laughs> <laughs> like I had to figure like out like how to best do this you know what's going to be really tough is the resist figure the resist figure is going to be tough holy shit it's going to be tough because the way the head is angled you Can know you with, you. yeah tough. like getting my uh my my pigment into the 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 head the face at that angle is going is not going to be fun. So Chris, on on the shelf right there next to you should be a, a gray. Did, keep going down, down, down. Oh, to the right. Keep draw, right, 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 right. Stop. It should be a little gray bear right there. That'll that'll do it. Here is a digital love, print. Yeah. I'll we'll show every. <laughs> Show everyone what this next one is going to look like. Yeah. So getting in there, not going to be fun. Not going to be fun. <laughs> but yeah. And so imagine that in the blister pack. Um, and he's like using his limbs to kind of push through it. Um, so it's, um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, that's the glue side. All the figures are glued to the cards, so right. you can't like. I, I is highly un, uh, like like we 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 su definitely suggest you do not take fi the said figure out of the card. Actually, it would, it would definitely know, ruin something. Yes, you know, um, you know what you should do is you should also be selling those um, plexi uh, cases. We do. Uh, oh, you do? We do. Oh, I'll grab one right now. Hold on. These places are very helpful. But yes, um, we do have these guys. They're available on the site. Um, size B works. C also works, but it's you just get more. Uh, the A is a little too thin. And this right. is B, and then C is, is thicker like that. And, and you know you you it's protected from the elements. Is it UV protected or well, no? I'd, I'd have to ask Gunk if they're UV. Uh, UV plexi is a little more expensive. Mm. I doubt that it's uh, House of Purchase Seal Gunk acrylic cases. Probably not UV resistant. Right, right. But if you have it indoors and you don't have direct sunlight on it or fluorescent lights, you should be okay. Yeah, but and yes, I we. Archival pigments for um, the um, the eyes and the, the nose, and it is the, the figures are also individually signed and numbered, right? Or yep, you yep. signed and numbered the figure on the foot, and then you also sign the card on the right. back. So very thorough. Yeah. yeah. So life is a prison. Hmm. Or that just it, it's it's not. I'm well, not. It, I, Oh, really? I, mean, it, I never was saying that life itself is a prison, but I was saying that, you know, this is what it's like to be in prison. Right. But yeah. I think what you were saying about gravity, that resonates for me because there's all these choices that you don't have. You know, it's like you have to eat and drink, you have to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I was, you know, describing to my kid, it's like, oh, if you don't eat or drink, like you die, right? If you don't shit, you know, you die. Yes. If you don't yeah. if you don't sleep, you kind of go nuts, but eventually you'll die. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's like you kind of um well that's the reason that's why we we've transformed those ne those necessary actions into pleasurable events. So for some of us sometimes, yes, but if you still have to you know a hunger, a spice 
The what? <laughs> Hunger is the best spice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. You like <laughs> you, you when you're hungry and you just have a slice of bread and you put you cram that piece of bread in your mouth, it is better than sex. When, when you're when that. You, when you said that, that reminded me of like something someone a sign someone would have crocheted like in my grandmother's house. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that struck me as. I am, I Hunger am. is the best spice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. I, think, I, I have think I, all kinds of grandmas. Wow. But, you know, it's like you live on this planet. Uh, I guess if you're a billionaire, like you can go into the, you know, stratosphere there for like 10 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. But for the most part, like, you know, like I said, I, I think, I guess I identify with it because I, I feel like we're all in cages it's just sort of like how big the cage is absolutely you know absolutely. and for so, for a lot of people they don't notice the cage but you know those of us who wake up and go to work every day i mean that's a cage some... yeah that that that, that, that is a uh, uh, that when you're stuck in a routine mm -hmm. you're essentially in a cage true i mean you know Samuel would ask me like why you know you have to go to work and my response is that before civilization you would wake up wherever you were living out in the tundra or the forest or the desert and then you'd have to go forage for food mm -hmm. and your humans spent most of the past two million years wandering around following food Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's a cage in and of itself. Like, so what's the difference? I'm impressed that you go to that length to explain to Samuel, because most parents would just say, you want to live in a house, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess I find that the world was not ever really explained to me. Uh, I wonder if I'm doing my kid a disservice because he gets these sort of answers to his questions. Um, and, and I you're think- You're forcing him to think bigger. You're, you're forcing him to think beyond his own existence, which is actually quite impressive. I, I hope so. I just, I yeah. worry that sometimes I'm just explaining too much and not leaving, you know, um, I mean, it's not that my parents, I don't have bad parents, they were fine. Um, they're good parents, <laughs> but they, they, could, they could not explain the world to me. In fact, I, I you know, uh, my dad's uh, died uh, over 10 years ago, but even I found myself having to explain the world to him. And, and this is normal. Like my kids will also have to explain the world to me because the world and technology is changing. Yes. You know, my dad would call me. He's like, I need you to come over and pick up this piece of paper and mm -hmm. you know drop it off at my doctor's right and i'm like you don't need to do that i bought you a fax machine here put it in there and you know like yeah right dating dating myself with a fax machine but you don't understand what i'm saying <laughs> yeah um, i get it i get it yeah no the well let's i i I've, I've thought pretty hard about like what it means like what would the benefit of having children i'm i'm 48 years old <laughs> no, I, I i don't i don't have children and it doesn't seem to be something that is in like the current, you know, um, path and what I'm told, which I'm totally fine with. But the thing is, is that, and I was thinking like, what is the real benefit of having a, a, a young human being um, with my body, you know? And my realization was something similar to what you just said. Mm -hmm. And that is someone to help explain the technology <laughs> <laughs> to me that's fun well you know before retirement plans and social security and all that kind of stuff um you wanted to have a lot of children a lot of healthy children because many children you know died you know before the age of 10 very yeah. often of disease so the the number of you know adult children and adult male children that you had meant that you could have a comfortable life when you couldn't you know work the field or do so that that was the reason for having children 
um, at, at that point. But, you know, I think humans have their own, have children for their own. Shit, if, if I that, could I, have someone, a little human being, editing all like cre editing video content for me from you know my social media <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> um i'm sure you could find a 13 year old to do that for you like <laughs> on the cheap on the cheap yes <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'll that give that's you 10 whole dollars right. for let's putting together a tiktok video for me yeah, they, they... <laughs> um uh, but maybe but, yeah. not i i don't know i don't know what it's like trying to get like when i was 13 i was motivated i wanted to make money and i was you know unhappy with my situation i was unhappy with being told like you can't have that because we can't afford it right, right. and that was like a motivation yes yes um and today it seems like the younger generation doesn't care about owning much mm -hmm. and doesn't um the really i i just okay i'll give you an example of my seven-year-old like he came over here to the warehouse mm -hmm. and he's like is there any jobs i can do for money i'm like yeah you can sort all these i'll give you five bucks and he's like five bucks you can't buy anything for five bucks <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, but you have to do multiple jobs to like save up to like, he's like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. I'm going to go play with a Nerf gun. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that is great. Yeah. Uh, remember, remember when five bucks was amazing. Get that, <laughs> you look at that Abraham Lincoln. Yes. I have the world in my fucking hand. And, um, I, I feel like it's it's just getting more expensive to breathe these days, right? It's, right? It's kind of insane. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, the yeah. Everything is inflate overinflated. It feels like everything. It yeah. I, I I'm I feel lucky that I could still find a like if I could find gasoline for three dollars and ninety nine cents. I'm a gallon. I'm like amazing. Man. <laughs> <laughs> like even if I've got like seven eighths to the tank, I have to stop by, stop over and top off. You know, just because you know that gas is just that that the price of the gas is just too good. But um, that's, that's the most brutal thing I've heard all day. <laughs> 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 that's like talking about life as a prison talking about like you know not having choices talking about like you know trying to like find yourself in the world that was all like here but like having to top off at seventh eighths to like get that 3.99 a gallon that just went oh <laughs> well you don't you don't you, you, i mean you're driving electric cars that you don't i, I, I am now yes yeah so you don't even worry about those things anymore you know it must be nice must be well nice. I, I mean i do have to pay the electric bill you, yes yes and the oh. summers it's just you're, you're you're just you're just adding stress to the fucking grid you know thanks stuff <laughs> wow anyways, any, anyways. <laughs> this interview had just devolved into <laughs> just fucking brutalness <laughs> but it's also funny isn't it isn't this hilarious? Like, you know, life is just this like hilarious fucking joke. And I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, I never thought I would be, you know, pushing 50 doing what I'm doing. Like right? on the convention circuit and now like an online retailer. I mean, yeah. that's essentially what I am now. Yeah. That's something like I fought against my entire life. I went into the wholesale business specifically to avoid doing retail. Like <laughs> not to have to deal with like, you know uh i mean i love all of our customers who are you know watching um but <laughs> it's just you know there was just something about it and then if i ever did a convention like everything was just like a fire sale like if someone picked something up and they just went how much is this 10 bucks and they're like ah, okay how about eight and like boom you know it was like just get it away <laughs> it just got really bad at it you know <laughs> oh, yeah man. but like you know you you 
it, it, but you're not you're not just like sitting there pushing product you're also producing product which uh, is to, to some extent i mean we're creating a platform for people who make this kind of art uh to mm -hmm. be featured and then we're and it's also you, it's product and art that you genuinely enjoy you, you it, it tickles you it does it uh it, it does every convention i see some pieces that are st they're still pulling those those strings it's still mm -hmm. working um yeah. I, I wonder what will happen I, i'm doing my best not to let it just become a commodity and not to care because mm -hmm. at, at that point um i don't know you start losing you know the passion for why you like show up to do it every day um but right. it's I don't know. It, uh, it it definitely it definitely is is fun, and it's it's also fun, well, providing a platform for people who make this stuff. Also providing a platform for people like you who would normally not make a three and three quarter inch figure, and right. try to to get you sort of like into the fold and you know expressing yourself in that medium. Right. And, no. Uh, this, it, it, this was a this was a a fun series for me to work on and. You know, it's definitely kind of like forced me to like think a little bit out of my wheelhouse because, um, you know, I, 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 I kind of like fancy myself more of a painter than a toy guy, but, you know, it like, you know, seeing the blister pack, feeling the card stock, you know, seeing my little dude like inside there, like it all, it all kind of brings back, you know, memories of me hanging out at the longs drugs and the toy section um like sorting through figures and right. you know all that all that good stuff and i'm um i'm oh that's uh hey, look, the here. it's patrick hey, hey. and liz and anthony what's, what's going on guys hey happy thanks con. for happy con thanks for interrupting our interview fuck you <laughs> i was in the middle of mine and you took them <laughs> oh, is that how it works? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Luke sold out. Oh, good. Nice. Yay. 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 In, in like two <laughs> minutes. Wow. Wow. Are you selling it right on your site? Or are you doing? They're on our site, yeah. It's weird to set up. Like, there's no portal. What do you mean? Like, there's no like Comic Con portal when you buy stuff. You just go to the individual website to buy, right? Uh, you can go to the San Diego Virtual Con and then click on DKE Toys, and that'll take you to our store. Right. Which or is you can website. just go to our web store at, or our website and then click on the store link. Yeah. Oh, hey, so, Anthony, how's it going? Didn't recognize you. Hey, man, no, you're so tiny. I didn't tell who it was. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, uh, what, that's what Anthony most of us will say about me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There was a better joke in there somehow. I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's there. It's there. Yeah, it's, it's there. <laughs> Anyways, um, but 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 yeah, you said you uh, th but you said you think of yourself as a painter and not a toy guy. I mean, this is actually kind of in reference to a comment I saw posted a couple days ago mm -hmm. from a colleague. Yeah. <laughs> in conversation with a owner of an owner producer of a toy store mm -hmm. <clears throat> about how apparently like because i am locked down with monkey king and flab slab like i'm my career is apparently suffering or it's i'm, I'm just not going like i'm just not apparently apparently i'm just not like a, as big as i could have been if I had, you know, like, uh, and <laughs> cause makes toys and Ron English makes toys. Like, I mean, that's just one, that's like saying, if you released a t-shirt, you know, that's what I'm saying. You said like, I'm, you know, mostly a painter. I mean, you're an artist mm -hmm. and you make art and then you make other like less expensive things that represent the art for people who can't, you Buy know, afford art. a, a four yeah. to $5,000 painting. But mm -hmm. from what I've seen, mm -hmm you know, your art has consistently gone up 
in prices like every year or two when you have a show like the prices creep up just ever so slightly and mm -hmm. most uh i mean fortunately or unfortunately are not affordable by most people right right and so I, congratulations you know, I, <laughs> well this, the thing you is are not that accessible by most human beings i am not interested in like like i don't like i don't see what the benefit of me like producing something with like a whole bunch of other different companies, you know, would be. Like the reason why I did this figure with you, Dove, is because this is your thing. This is right. your wheelhouse. You know like how the like you have the resources, you have the um the the tools, you have the experience and understanding of how like it, you know, like producing these figures works. Like if I did it with like Patrick, of course he could have done it. Yeah, he could have figured it out, you know, but like, you but know, that's, this, but that's, this is, this is like a DKE thing. Right. But it's an know? opportunity that presented itself. If someone came by and said they wanted to do, you know, Luke Chu jewelry and offered you a bunch of money or, you know, t-shirts, you know, that were going to be in, you know, 500 hot topic stores like it's you gonna say no because like i'm not a t-shirt guy like that's well it's it's also like you know like let's say um, i guess i'm commenting more about what that other artist said that that just made no sense like that no, somehow no, no. that you've sold your soul like to monkey <laughs> king and that is you know yeah. affecting your art career right um, <laughs> it, no, it affected my toy art career i think is what they said and oh it's affecting your toy art career like i man i don't know anyone who's concerned about their toy art career <laughs> it's like man i'm gonna make toys with those people oh like those people don't have any street cred like right man it's well, like the cool thing about toy art is that when someone makes an awesome toy it transcends the brand like I don't care you see you know I can't even think of someone whose brand is like less than that you know produce something great but the object speaks for itself like I, I think that that was my fascination with art toys to begin with and why I was attracted to them and was you know moved away from pop culture at the time was because this person made this you, the artist's personality was imbued in this three-dimensional object. The fact that, you know, which brands are actually like meaningful in the scene, like for a while, maybe it was like Kid Robot or something, but I don't know. Are there brands that people are like, oh, I want to make, you know, I mean, unless you're like douchey and want to make something like, I want to make something with Supreme or, you know, you know, something or like, like that. Or like Metacom Bear Brick or... Uh, sure. You know, but I, but I mean, you've done that, and so have thousands yeah. of other artists. Like that doesn't, right, right. I mean, well, it's a cool, I, it's a cool thing to do. But does anyone look at like Metacom? Because Metacom's popularity, you know, was like up here, and then was kind of down here, and is now back up again. You know, I don't know. I that that was a that's a weird comment. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Like I'll just, you know, I don't know how 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 big is your audience right now? Right now? Well, yeah. Can uh, that's probably around 50 people right now. Okay. I don't feel like I should say, I, I, I don't, I don't know that I <laughs> no, this is going to be on YouTube and far more people will watch it, you know. Right. Okay, um, well. yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter who said it. Um, but yeah. odd thing to say, like that, because I know very few people who actually make money from toys 100%, <laughs> like. <laughs> Right? I mean, right. So, like, this is. <laughs> if, I, if I was relying on fucking my toys to fucking like make my income, I would. That's my point. That's my I point. I would definitely so, not be, a, I would definitely not have like be living on my, uh, uh, living on my own. That's, uh, that's the absurdity of, of the comment is that most I don't artists. Think I could even I don't think I would even be able to afford my fucking cell phone. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and and the cost of production is is too great. It means every time you had to, even if you were producing your own toys, which would make you more money if you were, you know, um, if you were investing the money, but it's like one bad project mm -hmm. can can tank the next two or three. Right. 
right? right. Because like there go all your funds, you know, oh, I have $50,000 sitting in a project and it didn't sell well. And then you lose your ability to make money in the future. And that has tanked so many designer toy companies. Yes. Um, but I, I think that's, you know, I guess my point is, is that most artists I know make a living that they cobble together from doing a whole well, then, lot of different It's also things. a lot of hustling, right? Like, you know, like a lot of these indie toy producers, they are, I mean, no matter what, like, no, you know, when, when, you, when you do a production, you are making a, you're, you're, you're making a bet. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, right. and, um, it, it, and you're hoping that this design, this idea really connects with an audience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can um, gauge it by like using social media and using, um, you know, like your friends and colleagues to kind of look at the work and judge response on on how it does. But unfortunately, the thing is, is that even if you get like a ton of people like, you know, like, you know, hooting and hollering about like, you know, how much they like it, it doesn't always translate to, to dollars. Sure. You know, and not, it, ev- not, not everyone can afford to, even the people, I'm sure you had some people that you know that like when you first started out were collecting like everything you made. Yep. Like mm-hmm. ultimately those people need to be independently wealthy to like even continue. And right. then n- maybe not even be an issue of finances. It's just the space to put the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you, if you collect prints, you can have a flat file. You collect comic books, you have a few boxes, right? You collect right. toys, you need like, you know, you need a warehouse like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ian's, Ian's laughing. Ian's sitting here eating pizza, just like pepperoni just came out of his nose. <laughs> All right, yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, well, we need to go, unfortunately. Um, it's always a pleasure, Dove. Thank you. I really appreciate the time. Appreciate the the toy that you did, taking the time to talk to us. Um, this was brilliant. I think this is sort of like a watershed moment. You've created something that really um, transcended the medium, um, mm, and really uh, is. I also really... want to give a shout out to Vandal. Uh, Vandal had actually post uh, done a similar uh, figure. And mm-hmm. he uh, released it way before we did, mm-hmm. and it's this, it's very, it's very similar to the realized idea. And you know, it's um, it, it, I think it's one of those you know like you know like minds right. think alike, you know, great minds sure. think alike thing. Look, and you're so, you're you're not the first person to think of a, a character trying to like escape a box or a prison, right? But exactly. applying That's- applying it you know, in this way to a three and three quarter and then taking it a step further and doing a series of them, which mm-hmm. was, was rough because you had to, con- you know, I was, how long was I hounding you like to, to finish? You had to finish <laughs> all three paintings, you know, yeah. before we could even start the first. You were very so. patient with me, Dove. I, I, <laughs> I, I truly appreciate that. You, you definitely gave me some like space to kind of breathe, you know, while I was working on all three paintings. So space um, to and, breathe. Like, yeah, and it was also. Are you done yet? <laughs> At least you know what though. And here's a tip to um, other artists out there, and it's um, a tip that I'm often kind of talking to my friends about. Even if a client or a gallery or whatever is kind of hounding you about, you know, the project that you're working on for them and you're not done, just a simple response of like, hey, I got your message and I'm working on it is helpful enough. Because the one thing you don't ever wanna do is ghost these people. And like, you know, because you're freaking out because you're not done and you don't wanna disappoint them or or something like that. That, um, you know, taking the simple time going, hey, I got your message, I'm working on it. I, you know, maybe give them a guesstimate of like when you think you might be able to realistically have it done, you know, is super helpful. It, it, is, it helps, you know, keep relationships good and, um, and you know, gives people a, 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 the ability to kind of, it gives the producers the ability to like, plan ahead 
and Definitely. you know famous sage advice from luke Chu, boys <laughs> and girls so, you know even if it's the email is disappointing like at least let them know you know that like hey i'm going to need a little extra time you know it it, it like i'm sure dove as a, a person who's worked with plenty of different artists you know you've gotten many many of your emails have been ghosted <laughs> um there's not too many i mean usually uh but this is a small you know little industry where i know people you know pretty well but yeah i mean it's definitely um people are afraid of disappointing other people. sure and yeah. it also depends how you're socialized also like you know uh having the integrity to say like hey i didn't do what i said i was going to do but i'm still going to try and get it done you know and then follow up on your your new mm -hmm. commitment is you know that's hard yeah yeah it's um you know don't be afraid you know if you know if the, especially if the person's been around long enough you know in the production aspect of it you know they've seen it all so indeed you know. Well, this is a fabulous way to end the interview with like depressing advice from Luke Chu. How apropos. <laughs> All right, dude. Thank you so much. No, no. Thank really you. You guys have a great uh, week. You have a great weekend. And thank you very much, though. And Ian and everyone else who is hanging out. Definitely. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll talk to All you right. soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. How do I get out of this thing now? <laughs> 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 Awesome.